All right, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create interactive inputs like this in Bubble IO. First things first, we have a blank canvas here with a layout of a column. In the style section, quickly copy along here. So the primary color, the primary contrast, always white ones along for the text and this gray color here, 67, 67, 67. Design, we're gonna add in a group here. No min width, max width 420. Untick fit height to content. Get rid of the min height and center this like so. On this group, we're gonna apply 24 pixels of row gap. And we're gonna add in a text here. For you, it could be login. For me, it's just gonna be custom inputs. The style is going to be a H3. And on the group A, we're just going to call this group login card. We're going to add in 16 pixels of padding all around. All right, add in a button here. No min width, min height is fine. And we're going to make this say login. Now, the inputs are going to sit in between the heading and the button. So we need to do this a different way. So to get that username text to actually move up, we can't use a normal input for now. We're going to, yes, but the first thing we need to do is add in a group in between. And we are going to no min width. Min height of 60 is fine for now. However, we are going to fit the height to content soon. And now we're going to add in First thing, the container alignment has to be in the line to parent for this. Now we're going to add in some text here in that middle bit as you can see. This is going to be username and it's going to be our font color of our gray we created. And then no min width, very responsive like you can see there. We're going to add in some margin of 12 on the left and two padding left and right like so, keep that center. And now you will see why I just did that. So we're gonna get an input now. And in the middle, like you can see, same thing. Make it fully responsive. Min height, we're gonna set it fixed at 41. Get rid of the placeholder, backspace like that. And on the input, we're going to add in 12 pixels of padding the whole way around like so. As you can see, the username text now fits perfectly there. Now, with our input, we're going to make this input user name. And our text right here, we are actually going to hit copy on the text, copy and paste. And as you can see in the elements tree here, they're on top of each other. We want to drag this down so we actually have a text behind the input, the input and then a text on the actual input at the front end. So we'll go up to the top here and change this to text username bottom, it's behind, and then text username top like so. Now on the bottom, this is how we're gonna actually uh, apply the conditions to you know move the text up itself and uh, yeah make this interactive so with text username bottom selected on the condition we're going to say when the input username is focused or input users value we're going to go input usernames value is not empty. We're going to change the placeholder text to username like so. The font color to our primary. We're going to actually change the font size. Right now it's set at 14. We want to make it a little bit smaller at 12. And the top margin we're going to change to negative 40, which actually brings the text up. So that's on text username bottom, like you can see. Now, if we hit text username top, very important we name these guys, 
Back on the appearance, I'm gonna actually add a flat background color of white with zero opacity for now. The reason we do that is because this is what's actually gonna move up and with this selected, the border line of this input actually protrudes with the text. So we need to add in a flat background color of white to make it look very clean. Now text username top, we're gonna to add in conditions here when input usernames, username is focused or input usernames value is not empty. We're gonna change the background color here to our full white now with 100% opacity. Font size is going to be 12 again, a little bit smaller. The top margin is going to also be negative 40. So it's very similar here, guys, negative 40. And then we're gonna add in another condition here that says when input usernames value is not empty and inputs usernames isn't focused, just like that. We're gonna change the font color to the gray like that with, that we've set up. Now let's preview this. Now we click this and it moves up like so. But what we actually wanna do here is, actually no, I quite like that, that looks fine. So as you can see, when we click this though, it is very snappy, it moves very quickly. We wanna actually smooth the transitions here. So on the text bottom, we're going to go into the appearance and we're going to change a new transition here. We're gonna do font size, we're gonna do font color, and we're going to do margin. Top margin, leave that all the same, that is fine. We're gonna select on the text top as well and just do the exact same thing here. Font size, font color, and top margin. Leave that at 200, that is fine, set to ease. And now what we can do is preview this again. We'll go back onto this, we'll refresh it. And then as you can see, when we click this, see how it smooths up like so. Very smooth like that. Looks very clean and perfect. Now, back on the group B itself, the aligned apparent, we're gonna get rid of the min height like I said. And group B, we're gonna actually copy and paste this. So copy and paste. Slip back on this and, sorry, we're gonna refresh that, refresh that. Group B, we're gonna click copy, and then we're gonna paste, and we're gonna make previous. And now we can go into this and change this to group password. And the text inside here, we just need to change to password and the bottom one to password and the conditions as well. That one is fine there. This one will need to be password, the bottom. All right, and just like that, back on this one. Now we have, when we hit this, username, we have this, we have password, and as you can see, the other one interacts accordingly and moves perfect like that. Now quickly, we will go back onto the group login card. We'll fit height to content, perfect in the center there. I'm not gonna worry about any styling and spacing, guys. Quickly do this login here, add a workflow. We're going to sign the user up, input, so we quickly back on the this. We're going to change the input to input password. Contact format is going to be a password. And we're going to make that input 
usernames value and input passwords value. I just like that basic sign up flow. Now back in this, we'll just make a random username and a password. I will just say random password. I'm gonna hit log in. Go back onto this really quick. Format the goodness gonna make sure that's text guys, like so. That was set to an email, which is why it wasn't working. It's text doesn't matter. Password doesn't matter. Hit log in here. I was still set to an email, so we will quickly go back and change this. We'll say this is an email, alright guys, so We'll just go, a lot of them actually are emails these days, so we will do this like so, basic password, log in. Okay, now back on the app data itself. As you can see, just like that, it is our registered user, save the email, save the password, and yeah, it's just really a way to sort of differentiate yourself with apps in Bubble. You know, the inputs can be very plain, as I'm sure you know. So this is a, a great way to change it up and utilize sort of the power of UI. It's a really cool uh, tip and trick this in Bubble. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this type of content, please make sure to like, subscribe. It really helps me out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.